Hey guys, Pim there 32 here. After watching Max Boysen's Chucky Egg video, we saw at the end of his video his top 10 games of all time. Well, I decided to make a list of my own top 10 games and I encourage you guys to do the same. I want you to post a video response to either my video or Max's video with your top 10 games of all time. But, to make it more challenging and fun, I'm going to add a rule that you must follow. You're only allowed one game per franchise. So that means you can't add two Final Fantasies on the list, for example, or two Crash Bandicoots. You're only allowed to pick one. I followed the rules as well, which kind of made it hard for me, so with that, let's get on with my list. At number 10, we have Hogs of War. If you look at gaming now, there aren't that many original titles. Hogs of War spat in the face of generic and brought us something which is nothing but original. Set in World War II, this turn-based strategy game definitely stood out among all the other World War games. Full of humour, slapstick violence and it's easy to learn controls, easily sits this game at number 10. And if that doesn't convince you, you're a freaking pig and you have bazookas. At number 9 we have Driver. Grand Theft Auto may be the more popular series nowadays, but back in 1999 Driver took GTA's concept and made it 3D. You play as a guy called Tanner, doing missions in four different cities, pursuing cars, running from cops, delivering items, running from cops, staking people out and running from cops. Although the sequel, Driver 2, blew everyone's expectations away and was overall a better game, nothing can really compare to the awesomeness of the first one, even if the training mission did suck ours. At number 8, we have Soul Blade. If you took Tekken, a load of weapons, a good control scheme, put them in a blender and hit go, you'd get this masterpiece. Soul Blade, or Soul Edge depending on which side of the globe you're on, had a great cast of characters, amazing controls that were simple to learn but hard to master, some awesome moves and a great difficulty curve. It was a close call for me between this and Soul Calibur 3, but because it's only one game per franchise, I decided to go with the first game because of my initial whoa when I first bought it. At number 7 we have 1080 Snowboarding. Now, I'm not a fan of snowboarding, but I am a fan of 1080. 1080 is one of those games that you have to play at least once before you die. Great landscapes, great graphics, and just great fun. With a variety of tricks to master, gameplay is awesome, even if you don't have a second player. But if you do, <laughs> that's where the fun starts. And now that the Wii has a board you can stand on, Nintendo pretty much need to release another 1080, because 1080 Avalanche was... meh. Nah. And if all the other companies are re-releasing all the franchises, like Capcom with Mega Man, you should too, Nintendo. And at number 6 we have... Diddy Kong Racing. Now, Mario Kart was good, but it lacked a few things. Mario Kart didn't have power-ups you could gradually build up. It also didn't have the option to change your vehicle. Also, it didn't have an adventure mode where you could battle against giant animals. Well, Diddy Kong Racing had all these, with its colourful graphics and the option to either drive a car, a hovercraft or a plane, and the sense of exploration when trying to find secret levels, Diddy Kong Racing can define fun, simple racing. Oh, and it has a big blue elephant genie from India. Before we get to the top 5, here are some honourable mentions for some games that didn't quite make it to the top 10. Streets of Rage 2. This side scrolling and beat em up is for the Genesis Mega Drive and was a pretty good game. The only reason this didn't make it to the top 10 was, well, I played it when I was young so I sucked at it. Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead is a great first person shooter, zombie survival and the director that controls gameplay is great. My main gripe is that it's too short, that's why it didn't make the top 10. Time Splitters 2. I love Time Splitters, another first person shooter. It's quirky, it's funny and it's enjoyable, but it's more enjoyable if you have friends to play with, which I don't. Team Fortress 2. 
This probably would have been in the top 10, but after the somewhat controversial drop system that's been implemented, you don't really get a sense of achievement when playing it anymore. It's just luck. GoldenEye. Similar to Time Splitters, a great first person shooter and one of the very few good movie to video game adaptations. But again, it's more fun if you play multiplayer. Turok Dinosaur Hunter. A good game, better than most, but its lack of any real story made this game fall short of the top 10 list. The only way you might actually understand the story is if you read the Turok comics, which I didn't. At number 5 we have Super Mario 64. Come on, this had to be on the list. Everyone's played this some time or another, and if you haven't, you're missing out on one of the greatest games created ever. Super Mario 64 was a big risk, slightly worrying if Mario could successfully make the leap into 3D, and I think it's safe to say that it passed with flying colours. A huge game back in the day, with over 15 levels and lots of secrets, Super Mario 64 was and still is brimming with awesome. At number 4 we have Final Fantasy VIII and Controversy. One game per franchise in the Final Fantasy game isn't seven. Oh no! Hey, it's my list, and when it came down to it, I had more fun playing eight than I did seven. Maybe this could be because seven introduced me to the genre, so I kind of knew what to expect after that. But still, in my opinion, eight just had a better storyline. It definitely had better graphics. Overall, the quality of the game was just better. And everyone keeps saying Sephiroth is a badass. Hell, Cypher tried to cut Squall's face off in the opening movie. But Sephiroth killed Ares, I hear you cry. Screw you, that bitch was useless. At number three we have Metal Gear Solid 1. This game took a while for me to get used to. I was usually playing action games to go in and with all guns blazing. But this, this wanted me to hide and sneak? What? Maybe that's why it took me three months to get past the first elevator screen. But believe me, once I managed to figure out how to play it, it was a great gaming experience. With two discs full of awesome sneaking gameplay and a choice of two endings depending on how you've done in the torture scene, made this game had a great replay value. Especially if you've got the bonus special missions disc that was packed with a bunch of extra VR missions. At number two we have Blast Core. Two nuclear missiles have started leaking and it's on a lockdown course to get to the detonation site. So the blast core has the level buildings that are in the path of the carrier as if it gets jolted by anything it could blow up and set off a nuclear explosion. So how do you level these buildings? Well with bulldozers, explosions and giant freaking robots. You have to destroy buildings with big ass robots. What's not to like? I love this game just for its uniqueness and its great difficulty curve. Easy enough for new players to pick up and play, but next to impossible to 100%. Especially when you have to go to the moon and destroy a moon base. It's in low gravity. Freaking impossible. So what is my all time favourite game? Well, before I tell you, let's have a recap from 10 till 2. At number 10 we have Hogs of War. Number 9, Driver. Number 8, Soul Blade. Number 7, 1080 Snowboarding. Number 6, Diddy Kong Racing. Number 5, Super Mario 64. Number 4, Final Fantasy VIII. Number 3, Metal Gear Solid 1. And number 2, Blast Call. And my all time favourite game is... Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. I admit, I had a lot of trouble deciding whether this should be number 1 or its sequel, Majora's Mask. But when it came down to it, Ocarina of Time was the game that made me a fan of action adventure games and RPGs. Ocarina of Time is the golden trophy, whereas Majora's Mask just does a pretty good job at polishing it. This game is the definition of epic, and definitely made waking up on Christmas 98 worthwhile. There is nothing that isn't good about this game. The characters are strange yet somehow believable in a weird way. The dungeons are big, the bosses are brutal, and Ganon is just a bad motherfucker. From the opening scenes to the final boss, this game is probably the most fun I've ever had or will have while gaming. 
Open landscapes, a superb storyline, great graphics and a brilliant musical score make this game definitely worthy of the number one spot.